Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Oxvlog. I know it's been quite a while. Um, my name is Kat, I uh, am a student at Oxford, <laughs> postgraduate student, currently finishing up my second master's in neuroscience at Teddy Hall. Before that, I was at St. Anne's doing a master's in psychology, and in the fall, I will be starting my PhD in neuroscience uh, at Keeble College. So that is me, but on to the more important stuff. So. Um, you may have seen in the news that part, as part of the uh, Black Lives Matter movement and a lot of the protests that are going on around the world, uh, there were some protests in Oxford surrounding the uh, Cecil Rose statue uh, outside of Oriel College. And in case you were wondering, um, as not everyone is familiar with the history of who this is, uh, why there was a protest and all of that, I thought I'd make a quick video explaining um, why people want it removed and why it's important to do so. Okay, so I have notes, um, so bear with me, hopefully this will work out. Okay, so Cecil Rhodes, uh, really old guy, born in 1853, and he was a British imperialist and the Prime Minister of the Cape Colony, uh, so South Africa and other colonies um, of the British Empire. And uh, one of his primary motivations for uh, his business, he was in the diamond business, as well as for his politics, was that the Anglo-Saxon race was the, and this is a direct quote from him, the first race in the world. Um, and he suggested direct quote, uh, the more of the world we inhabit, the better it is for the human race. <laughs> so, you know, great guy. Uh, no, not at all. Very racist. Terrible, terrible man. And uh, the ties to Oxford is that he went to Oxford for one term and then didn't come back. <laughs> uh, and he went to Oriel College. And so the statue of Rhodes is on the wall of Oriel College. You may have also heard or might be more familiar with the name Rhodes uh, from the Rhodes Scholarship. That is like the most prestigious scholarship that you can get at Oxford um, and it supports students from around the world, which is great that they do that, but their history is uh, quite concerning. So basically, this Rhodes dude, uh, founded the Rhodes Scholarship with the intention of enabling male students from British territories as well as Germany, yay, home country, uh, to study at Oxford. And the thing is, is that, uh, yes, he only said, like, male students, but one of the requirements in order to get a Rhodes Scholarship was to pass the um, kind of admissions test that Oxford did back in the day, requiring knowledge in Latin and ancient Greek, which uh, discriminated in that sense because um, a lot of non-white people in the world didn't have access to that kind of education. So while not specifically saying, hey, you know, we don't want people that are not white, um, there are other ways to do that. So yeah, you know, not great, not great. And Last part of my notes, apparently. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, the scholarship exists to this day. There is some controversy around it, but now they accept women and they accept people from a lot of different countries. But still, you know, it has that name that it bears and it has that wearing past, um, which is, you know, really not cool. So, um, there is a movement that started in 2016 called Roads Must Fall. Uh, this started in South Africa in Cape Town uh, at the University of Cape Town because they had a statue uh, of road and they wanted it taken down, which is great. Um, that gained traction and people in Oxford also got interested. And so in 2016, the Roads Must Fall movement in Oxford um, tried to campaign and protest for the removal of the statue from Oriel College, the college that Rhodes went to, and also called for a change in curriculum uh, that reflects diversity of thought 
um, beyond the Western canon. Sorry, I'm like reading my notes. Um, so really, you know, this makes sense. Like every reasonable thinking person would think, yes, a statue of a super racist old guy, uh, imperialist that, you know, was of the notion that A, it's fine to just like take over other countries uh, and enslave the people there. And also that thinks that, you know, back to the quote, the more of the world we inhabit, the better it is for the human race. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, so every logical thinking person would be like, yes, we should remove this statue and the connotations with it because that is highly problematic. I mean, also considering the Rhodes Scholarship, you'd think maybe a name change, <laughs> maybe something could be done. Um, that being said, I'm not a Rhodes Scholar. I cannot speak from my personal experience. I'm sure nowadays they are better and more critical than they were before. So, um, now, no, sorry, back then, in 2016, the university decided to keep the statue. Uh, they did acknowledge the problematic past of it, but, and this was officially said to not be the main reason or the official reason, but wait for it, they were getting threats that they would lose 100 million pounds in donations if the statue was removed. 100 million pounds from racist people that want to keep the statue. Um, okay, all right, cool. So statue remains, which is how we come to the present day. So part of the Black Lives Matter attraction and the response in Oxford, it, uh, in addition to the uh, more broad, general Black Lives Matter protest that happened, uh, there was also a protest in front of the Rhodes statue at Oriel College, again demanding that it was removed. So Rhodes must fall. Um, there are more than 1,000 people outside the statue, which is amazing considering that all undergraduates have left Oxford. A lot of postgraduates have left Oxford because of the coronavirus pandemic, um, but still 1,000 people came. It was a pre peaceful protest, uh, obviously. I don't know what else they would have expected, but here we are. Uh, yes, and then, um, so this is from a Guardian article. Um, and again, I directly quote, I quote that they quoted. <laughs> Waiting for the monitor to start. Okay, uh, sorry, my camera stopped recording because it said it overheated. <laughs> um, so, but now we're back. Um, where I left off is I was talking about the Guardian article. The article is called Protesters Rally in Oxford for Removal of Cecil Rhodes Statue. And I will link it down below, of course. So there are just some parts in here that I wanted to highlight. Um, for example, they interviewed a PhD student, uh, Jody, and I'm very sorry if that was not the right pronunciation of your first name, Jody. Um, and I think this is quite powerful, and that's why I'm going to read this, his quote, their quote. Sorry. Um, we reject this narrative that Cecil Rhodes is a complicated character. No, he is a genocidaire. He is someone who planned an assault on Africa, and he's not worthy of exaltation. He does not deserve to be on a high street looking down on us. That history will never be erased. It's a lived reality for people in Southern Africa, but it needs to be contextualized. It needs to be accurately represented and not glorified in the way it is today. You know, I think that speaks for itself. I am exactly of the same opinion. And I think that it is very, very concerning that the university, four years later, and also back in 2016, refused to remove the statue um, for, you know, whatever official reasons, and then the reason that they would have lost 100 million. I'm not sure if that money would have gone to Oriel College um, or to the university. Either way, not good, not good, not good. Um, and Jody, the PhD student quoted here, 
Um, he also said, uh, the protest went further than calling for the removal of the statue. It was also about meaningful equality. For the black community, given the moment we are in, but also people of color and people on the social and economic fringes of any society. Um, and he also called for justice and put importance on Windrush generation and saying that the Windrush generation scandal uh, is a substantive policy manifestation of anti-blackness. So we have a lot of issues here. Um, and it's a huge issue that Oxford is not removing the statue. Um, in my opinion, and in many other people's opinion, they can't say, you know, they're inclusive and not racist when there are still statues around of literal racists. <laughs> um, that is concerning. And this is all obviously coming from uh, a white perspective. But I'm trying my best um, through these articles and stuff to represent um, voices of Africans at Oxford. Uh, and also, you know, people of color in general, not just Africans. Um, an anonymous PhD student, for example, um, said something that... Uh, yes, okay, sorry. <laughs> Lost my train of thought there. Yeah, so an anonymous PhD student said, um, we're here to say to the University of Oxford, Oriel College, and other colleges in Oxford that still demonstrate uh, in support of the values we disagree with, that it is time to take a stand. If you are truly anti-racist and pro-good re race relations and inclusion of Black and ethnic minority students, then today is the day to put your money where your mouth is. You know, what else can we say? Um, yes. So, now you know what the protests were about. And I'm sure you're aware that Oxford being a really old university has a past of really problematic behavior, some of which uh, still is kind of present, present today. For example, there only being, I believe, eight uh, black Oxford professors. Um, let me double check that. I read that in another Guardian article. One of seven black Oxford professors, so. Um, Oriel College, as well as many other colleges, need to acknowledge their past and really step up and take responsibility and, you know, do they really need old statues of racist white men? I don't think so. I don't think that sends out the right message. Um, it just doesn't. So, um, remember, Black Lives Matter. They should matter at Oxford. Things should change. And I hope you're all staying safe in the pandemic. Um, wear protection. By that I mean face masks, but <laughs> wear protection <laughs> either way. Okay, see you next time.